Number one, the presidential candidates of African Action Congress. On I also recognize Dr. Marco. Ms. Michelle is here. So is Ms. Doris Akitimei and Mr. Ayo Akitimei. Afolabi Obundoye. Tameka Adenuga, our very good sister. Thank you. Abiyodu Belo, Pastor Ulure Nibadro, Ngozi Chuku, Mr. Tosin Ayege, B. Adewako, Papa Chude Olameko, Oyinda Ola Ake Kube, Pastor Belo Oolabi Lawa, Pastor Tayo Kobi, Mr. Ayuajai, Dr. Miki Utunuga, my own brother, Queen Esther, additional allow uh, and I did not see Lola Utade's name here. Yes, she's there, I know she's there. That's my baby sister. And my own sister. Yeah. here. And let's say that when we say, Mr. President is ready to come on. Could you please uh, get on your feet and welcome on my election for the next president of the
protocol when it comes to food. Please, get up, help yourself. The food is there, the drink is there. I give one question, we are the one question. Maybe Dr. Why why we are doing this. We are not doing this for ourselves per se. At least I can say that for everyone in this room. You are not doing it for yourself. Cousins, nephews, people around you. That's why you are doing this. You are okay. My second son is in the military. He's coming home on Tuesday. I don't have to worry about paying school fees. He's going to go to college. To any length he wants, I don't have to worry. So I'm not doing this for me. I don't even think I can stay in Nigeria more than 30 days. It's not about how we are going to do it, it's how big 
are we going to win in the next election? We are doing it with no money, in fact. When we started this idea, the two of you back up and let And I will be sitting there. I had $300 in my account. Your name? To my name, yes. <laughs> and uh, when I told Malcolm, I said, Malcolm, I want to run for the presidency of Nigeria. He said, we can do it. I went and told a lawyer in Nigeria who has been my lawyer for a long time. He said, are you crazy? If you can show me five billion there, then we can talk about becoming the president of the United In fact, if you show me five billion there, I will still advise you to go for governorship. And as I'm speaking to you today, we have not raised up to $300,000. And we're already an item on every agenda in Nigeria. And the other political parties that are known as the Benjamins, particularly the APC and the PDP, they are going to become item 7 on our agenda. Have you guys heard about item 7 before? Uh -huh. We are going to use them for dinner. Yeah. We eat them like chicken. That's what they are. We eat them like chicken. That's what is going to happen to those political parties. We have traversed Nigeria. We have also traveled around the world. Any ambition that takes you to Australia from Nigeria is not a joke. <laughs> I traveled in Australia to four cities and everybody is very, very convinced that not only can we pull this, but we can pull a generational upset. You know, not only in the election, but in putting Nigeria on the path of progress that everybody has always said is impossible. And we're just very young people. We have always been like this. We've always believed that Nigeria could be better. And we've always done what is right by the country. That is why Nigeria cannot afford to keep rewarding the people who have always done wrong by Nigeria. And social and political promotion again. Look at the people that we are up against. What have they done in their lives for Nigeria? I said this somewhere that I'm going to repeat it here today. If Nigeria were to be a proper country, if Nigeria were to be an ethical country, a Buhari would be in jail for treason, having overthrown a democratically elected government in 1982. In fact, if you would be in jail, you probably would have faced a brutal time. Because treason in Nigeria is the capital of peace. If Nigeria were to be an ethical country, and that people would also be in jail, maybe by now we'll be considering a role for him. <laughs> considering how much he stole. Not only did this thing in Nigeria, they came and started sleeping right here in Maryland. There's a neighborhood they call Potoma. In Rena, I think we received over forty million dollars in bribes in Potoma. When I started Sahara Reporters, I think this place in Potoma was one of the areas that I focused on. The house we bought for about two million dollars, where he used to spend every weekend almost. And what were they doing there? They were collecting dollars, both the ones that I wired to them through Western Union through world remits, and when they cannot physically, when they cannot transmit them electronically, they physically collect them and put them in freezers right here in Maryland. That is the person that is expected to become the president of Nigeria next year again. But we are saying this will not happen to us again. So tonight is not for any long species. We have, as far as past the state of giving species, we have walked into the era of taking action. 
and the most important action right now, there are two polls for those of you who are seated there today. One, whatever you can do to support us with your money, please do so. But most importantly, whatever you can do to call our people at home, don't forget to do it on a daily basis. A lot of our people, like Jerry Rollins told me in Ghana, are still in love with their oppressors. And we need to wake them up. A lot of our people are still very complacent. We are the ones who said when we started that we never go to the ambassadors of this world to go and seek any political blessing because our blessing is not in his living room. I am telling you, by today, or was it yesterday, the ambassador is now saying that he's not even sure who he's campaigning for again after the person that he They are seeing the signs all over the place. They are even sending messages to us that I should please come and see them. And they said, I don't have time to go to them. If they want to vote, they only have one vote. They can vote for us on the election day. Right. But I don't need to go to your house. The places we need to go to are the places we are going to. Places like Dara, Buhari's hometown. We rode into the place. Nobody ever thought that a presidential candidate opposed to Buhari can go to his own town. We went there at 8 p.m. But guess what? The place is in darkness. In real darkness. And the little, I mean, the young people there are saying, look, we want the man to return back to us. Because it's useless. And they're telling us Buhari is finished. And they are no longer saying save a guy anymore. They now say save a boy. Yes. This is what happened to Nigeria the last nine months. And this did not happen without your support. This hasn't happened without those of you who are donating to us on GoFundMe. As I'm standing in front of you today, on GoFundMe we raised over 105 thousands dollars. Go for it. No one, no one has ever raised that much money transparently in Nigeria before. We also have a bank account in Nigeria. And when the people in Nigeria heard that people in the diaspora are making donations, they got upset. They have also donated more money in local currency than what we got from GoFundMe. So we got about 40 million naira from Nigerians <laughs> with local bank accounts transferred to us. And what is important about this is that people are owning the struggle. They are investing in their future. You know Nigeria, people don't give to political causes, they collect from politicians. But in our case, as I'm speaking now, by the time I draw this microphone, some other donations would have come in. Because they're engaging and interacting with everything they have. And they're telling the Godfathers that we shall create a Godfather symmetry in Nigeria. Amen. This political movement. Amen. So that we can point to their dead bodies. That this is the political movement and party that came and put an end to Godfatherism within Nigeria's political system. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here not to give speech, I'm here to give appreciation to all of you. I'm here to appreciate you for spending your Sunday night with us. This is perhaps the most religious thing to do this Sunday because our country is in need of salvation. There's no question about it. And as it happens, salvation has not been coming to our country from the usual places. So it has to come from the unusual places. The same way Jesus came from an unusual person, an unusual family. I have become a little bit uh, 
They found out that all the political parties, there are 91 political parties in Nigeria, that the only party that has been given to run for their money is AAC. And you must all congratulate yourselves. Great thanks to 
Uh, the organizer of tonight's fundraiser. I thank you so much. And I cannot uh, thank our team members and you know, the leadership of AC and the Take It Back movement for the fantastic job that we've been doing. One of the things they've taught Nigerians how to do is how to do politics virtually. We are the only political party in Nigeria without what you can call a physical office. But we have the most effective method of conversing and mobilizing and reaching out to every our outreach system is on right now. We are the first digital party on the continent of Africa. Everything we do has a digital signature to it. You know, and there is a pastor that I wish was here tonight. He's a pastor of a church in Maryland. When we had a talk of it in the air, he invited me to his church the next day. And it was there that I declared, prophetically and spiritually, that this is a hurricane. And lo and behold, there is nowhere that we have touched. Either with our words or action that has not felt the impact of a hurricane. We have demolished old ideas. In fact, even younger candidates out there who were seen to be well packaged by the time they met the hurricane on TV, they all melted. Because there's nothing like the new currency which we are operating politics in Nigeria, that's the currency of ideas. And when those ideas meet all these old, obsolete, and antiquated people, they fall apart. And that is the idea that will lead to Nigeria, not to the next level, because the next level is a fraud. It is a fraud. In fact, the logo of the next level was stolen from another place. Is we are not promising Nigerians the next level, we are promising Nigerians the highest level. Finally, let me just thank all our supporters worldwide. So there might be a lot of us in house tonight, but there are more people who are staying awake across the world watching us through our Facebook live. That's our CNN right there. <laughs> yes. They are awake, they are sharing uh, our messages, they are sharing our broadcast, and they are helping to spread the ideas. One last thing I said to you was I had an interesting conversation with the DPO of the police station where our members were detained. So they gave me the phone and that I explained who I, I introduced myself to him. He said, ah. Okay, now you? He said, I said, I'm going to arrest the people. He said, what? Right now, the commissioner of police don't put leg. I said, well, the commissioner of police put leg. He said, yes. I said, well, the last person we put leg for our matter, he let me ask where he did. He said, okay, I'm going to tell me where he did. I said, when you see your commissioner tomorrow, ask him. He said, because. I don't want to make my leg go in that high place where that person not enter before. That shows to you that everybody is conscious of our existence because of the ground that we cover in such a short time. I would have loved to uh, speak for longer, but as soon as I drop the microphone, I have to go back to New York. And as soon as I get to New York, we have to get back to Vegas. Uh, and you know what that means. As soon as we get back to Lagos, we are going our south south uh, caravan visit to the southern part of the We have already gone the northwest, we have gone the south, of the people are following us because we saw us in Enugu, we saw us in Aba. So we are heading to every zone and region in Nigeria we touched before February 16th. 2019, which is election day. So, I just want you all to look forward to that fantastic day. And one last thing I'll say is that we are the first political movement to choose our swearing in days. Yes.
the Lord, it used to be May 29th. That is the day the president is sworn in. Now it will be June 12, 2019. Thank you. So thank you very much, everyone. And uh, I'm hoping that I'll take some questions while I'm still here. Is that, is that the case? Yes, yes. And so I've been told that uh, there will be three questions. That, uh, yes. Okay. So if you can't ask a question tonight, feel free to ask where we get on our broadcast uh, our platform on Facebook. We take questions and answer questions all the time. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I am sure intent to ask the question. And you have a question too. Uh, should we make it ladies first? Thank you. Some people look at how big 
our entertainment industry in right now. Some people paved the way for the new generation that we all see that has passed today. Some people did that job far back at 10, 8 years ago. Whatever happened, you laid the foundation, you're doing an amazing job, and I just want to tell you that. Thank you for your time. Mr. Obama, your question very quick. Uh, Mr. President, uh, change is one of the most talked about around the world. But change is one of the most difficult things that has ever been introduced and sustained. So my question to you, as take it back and AAC, though we don't want to call it change because of uh, change we had in the past. So how do we want, how do we want to sustain this take it back and AAC? That's my question. Please, please. In Nigeria, 
if one of us here is present in Nigeria before the day of the election, how do we go about supporting our own party? What do we think we can do? Or what can we do if we are on ground before the day of the election? Thank you. Thank you very much. I, Mr. Mr. President, you got a question. The first question was, how are you going to sustain the And the general question is a twofold. Why don't we win out people that have nothing to offer the quality? And then the other question was about voters' card. Why can't people register even when the election is this event? Yes. Yes. Uh, with, uh, that's your question about sustaining the movement. I uh, I put that uh, the movement has come to stay. That's right. Because the uh, movement is in Nigeria. It is not just a movement, it has now become a political party. And within such a short time, the popularity of the movement within such, I mean, such a short time shows to you the seriousness of the movement. Um, and we are already spread across the country. And people know us. They know us from Lagos to Paran and Modern in Zamfara State. They know us on the streets of Kansas, in Sokoto, they know us in Dara, Wari, they know us in Kassina, they know us in Kotaka. So the movement has very strong memory preservation, it's ideologically based. It is also very rooted amongst the masses because it's the only movement that is speaking to the aspirations of our people at this time. To have 24 hours of electricity to have a minimum wage that is equivalent to a living wage, to provide security for everybody regardless of where they are, who they may be, to provide food, in you know, universal healthcare system for the people of the country. That is what has happened. And what I can tell you all is that the movement has come to stay. Now, like I said, regarding our brother who is uh, talking about debates, we would have loved to have as many as 10 debates so that we can win the election even before the election day. But unfortunately, we are not responsible for organizing debates. In fact, to find a spot on the local media in Nigeria, you have to be a big man. So sometimes we practically have to force ourselves to be in TV stations based on the ideas that we are propagating in our campaigns. And when they hear these ideas and they know that they have caused you know, a lot of debate going on within the society, then they invite us to come to the TV stations. But you find out that of all the three major candidates right now, ourselves and the two others, I combine them as one, we call them the Tiku. That's the Buhari and the Yes. You cannot find a single war that Buhari has ever spoken since the election cycle started. You also cannot find anything Atiku said that is worth quoting, apart from saying that he wants to sell the NMC. That's the only thing he has said since the debate, I mean, the campaign started. So, but we are not responsible for organizing the debate. In terms of taking them out of the system, that is what we are here to do. Exactly. We are here to take them out completely, you know, and make sure that Nigeria is able to have a fresh piece of life that is devoid of all these people that have destroyed the country. With regards to voters' registration, I think that's what we are referring to, that is not in September. We actually went and did a protest in Nigeria, a party. And a movement organized a protest that led to the revocation of registration for two weeks. And within that, that two weeks, that we fought for the revocation of registration of voters, over 400,000 voters registered. They don't want people to vote because they know that if real people register to vote, they can never win the election again in Nigeria. Yesterday, in the March, that the last election in 2015 had 
over 30 million voters who didn't have PVCs. That was the revelation that came out yesterday. These are the things they are banking on. And last thing what I'll tell you is that the reason why the people are going not to tell you election dates is that even if they give you a date, they change it whenever they like as it's convenient for their winning or losing the election. So you cannot predict the real election is not cast in gold. Unlike in the US where you have a Tuesday and it's in November. In Nigeria, the president has not signed the electoral law that is going to govern the next election, even yet. So legally, we don't even know the election we hold yet. And I'm saying this to you honestly and categorically. So I hope you get it now. But join us. You ask us what can you do to help. You don't have to be at home to vote in case you are not registered. But you can help us convince people who are registered at home to vote. In fact, we found out that a lot of people in the diaspora were responsible for the registration of voters because there was a decision made in some of our town hall meetings that if you have relatives that are not registered at home, don't send them Western Union. And people started doing it. And they said, look, if you want me to send you money, send me your voters, uh, your voters card. That was how a lot of people went They were they saw me in Lagos and said, ah, you are the one who forced me to go and register. Somebody called me from Maryland, they said you said, if I don't register, I was trying to know. I said, you have your minister. He said, yes. Now you can get your Western Union. Maybe it's time to give for the election. So I, I think we can take more questions. Um, I will crave your, crave your indulgence to increase the number from three to five. The reason being that I'm doing fundraiser after this. I don't want people to get angry. Hey, I'm glad that uh, I have the opportunity to meet personally with uh, our next president. I was in Nigeria lately between September and October. Besides me, I was in London. That's my hometown. And I talked to many people about you. It's not a matter of bragging, but at least I, I was able to convince nothing less than 100 people. At one point, somebody asked me, are you getting paid for doing this? I said no. But I'm just interested in this guy. He is the only one I think can change Nigeria. Yes. Especially you, the person I was talking to is a student. And there are two things that really concern me. One, most of them don't know about you. Until when I begin to tell them about Sahara uh, TV and all those things I showed them on my on my phone, or the, I subscribe to your uh, program. So each time you send something, you upload something, I do better and I show them. The next thing, the only thing I can hear from most of them is that I don't have my PVC and I'm not going to vote. And I'm like, why? Most of them, they are afraid of what might likely happen because what happened during Oshun state election. You are referring to that. So my question now is that, do you all have any idea if they say uh, anything to prevent such occurrence during election? Thank you very much. I saw the hand up As the follow-up to this question, I was telling them again that the problem with the next election is that APC and PDP will raise the What strategy do we have in place to ensure that every vote counts? Because what happened in Russia, what happened in other states, we all know it. And we don't want people to just go and vote and their vote will not count. So what do we have in place to ensure that every vote counts in the next election? Then secondly, what strategy do we have to ensure that the next generation are involved in what you are doing? 
because it's a shape that the young people themselves are the one campaigning for, for identity. So how can we get these young people involved in what you are doing? Because that is all you need to do. If Nigeria has about the 60% youth, and then we need to win the election with 60% youth. That's yeah. the Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I take one more before you answer? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my question is direct. Uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, I just want to ask something. Do you have uh, uh, a security network in place? I'm just concerned about you, boss. <laughs> Do you have a security strategy in place? You know, in America, you know, people that are campaigning here over here, they have a uh, uh, security network like uh, they will detain them, like uh, uh, SSN. All security services, you don't have that in Nigeria. Or you are not believing only in prayer. You are ready to know. So you can answer this question, sir. Then we'll take a few more. I was I was at the last question first. Even pastors don't believe in prayers when it comes to security. You need to see the security details of our general Marcias. They don't joke with their security. But let me say this to you. Uh, first, there's nobody in my shoes who will be revealing security infrastructure that they have in place in Nigeria in public. That's one thing I can tell you. Second is that, look, the work that we're about to do is a revolutionary job. The least thing that should be on the mind of a person who wants to save a country is how secure it is. Otherwise, you'll be paralyzed in your house. You won't be able to step out. Uh, don't worry about that. That's what I can tell you. There is enough in place to secure me and to secure the future of Nigeria. But most of what is your commitment. Uh, the question about how many people don't know Shore, it's true and it's not entirely true. A lot of people actually know us. A lot of people know me. But a lot of people have not socialized themselves to know anybody else or the thieves in the country. That is the name that they have been memorizing since they were born. Harry, I think, who was a job of Angita. Those are the names of the thieves. They are the ones in the social studies that they teach you in school. Because they don't longer teach history. If they were teaching history, we would not be mentioning their names in public anymore. So, what do you do is the right thing you did. Anybody who said, I've never heard about Shore, tell them about Shore. And that's all you owe that person. And when you tell them, they should know. But when you tell them a little bit more, like you said, don't you know Sahara reporters? Almost everybody will come back to you and say they know Sahara reporters. And if you ask people who are older, if they know MK or Abiola, most people know MK or Abiola. And who are the people who fought for June 12th? They know us. You see, there are, in fact, more evidence of my engagements with Nigeria historically than an Atiku, for example, or a Saraki, for example, or, you know, I would say I almost have almost as many as the likes of Buhari, and I'm not bragging, it's the truth, because Nigeria is 58 years since attainment of independence, right? I have been engaged in Nigeria for 30 years. If you take 30 out of 58, there's only 28 years left. How can we claim that such a person is a known quantity? I'm not discountenancing what you've said, but I'm just saying they've done a fantastic job and everybody who is confronted with the same question 
to do what is exactly you did. You have 100 people for us, but not also forget that we also have in you know, no time candidates who are running in the next election. We have governorship candidates. We have you know uh, House of Representative candidates. We have senatorial candidates running in the next election. We have House of Rep uh, sorry State House of Assembly Rep uh, candidates, and all of them have from our party. We must keep congratulating ourselves that we are competing against parties that have existed since 1999 and another party that is in power that started five years ago and we are only eight months and we are as popular if not more popular than these parties. So that is something we can make ourselves for. <laughs> Regarding reading, I have been around long enough to understand that reading is part of Nigeria's political genetic makeup. <laughs> yes, they will read whatever is reading. But they are also smart enough to understand that you can only read where you can win outrightly. And in this election, they cannot read against the determination of the Nigerian people. That you cannot, you can't read the will of people. You can read the paper. And the reason why Buhari is not interested in signing the new electoral law, even though lawmakers also included their own shenanigans in the law. But it gives room for electoral results to be transmitted electronically as soon as agents have seen a sign. But they don't like that. Because in the process of moving papers around from the polling units to the world and the local government, a lot of manipulation and alterations always happen. We are going to use technology on our parts. And I'm not saying it to shut you off. I did it before, almost single handedly. The 2015 election was saved by Sahara reporters. Otherwise, Buhari would not be in our we collected independently election results from 10 states, announced it before IDEC could announce it all. And that was how Rubele, the Minister of Nigeria, lost his mind the next day <laughs> and sat on the floor, rolling on the floor and said, Where did you get this result? He will not take it. He will not take it. You know, and we will do it again. But again, permit us not to reveal all of our strategies to counter Rubele. Yes, it's true they did it in the uh, Ekiti State. But it's not to a point where they don't read anymore. They don't read the way you do it. They don't carry ballot papers and ballot boxes. And they do what they call see and bad. Where they carry money to polling units and pay people. And you'll be seeing arguing between people. Between the people who say they have 3,000. The one who left to make it uh, is 5,000. That's what they do now. It is that particular culture that is the most dangerous that we must all continue to campaign against. Not, not worry about anybody carrying ballot paper. The technology has made it almost stupid to be carrying ballot paper and ballot boxes because of the way election results are transmitted by even people who are not entitled to do it. There's almost evidence everywhere these days of women that are captured on uh, electronic devices. So they don't do it as, as much as the thing. But we can counter them with the time. Like I said, nobody can read our determination to retire all the old cargoes this time around. Uh, if the strategies to us, just support us and you'll be surprised. Thank you. So about the next generation, which is the question I'm going to ask, we have been doing a lot of work to convince young people not to support the people that destroyed their past. We have been doing a lot of work and it's working. That is why you see sometimes out of anger and frustration, they call us social media party. <laughs> because we have been able to counter them on social media. Where they are investing billions of naira, they have trolls all over the place. When you notice them on your Facebook page, they come and call themselves articulated. 
and then we respond by saying it's not articulated, it's articulated, you know. And before you know it, they are getting the message. They are getting the message. So the next generation is not on the ground as much as they are on social media. And we are doing a fantastic job. What I would ask you is, please, if you have a chance to make an impact on social media, not ignore it. If you see a status updates, don't just like it. Make your position known. Because you are making a historical, you are taking a historical stand on an issue that is important to you. But most times, most of us don't care. You say you just think it's a Facebook thing, or you know, someone says something stupid, then you let it go. A stupid idea will become a dominant idea if it's not challenged. But the moment you challenge it, it gets you know reduced to what it is, a stupid idea. So do yourself of course that favor, and that's how you capture the mind of young people. Ah, uh, Lord. Uh, I have no doubt that we can even win the election by more than 60 percent. That is the vote of all the young people in Nigeria and all the young people, men and women. And good news is that people always say that all people in diaspora don't vote. They have no idea how many people in diaspora actually went home to register to vote and who are planning to go back to vote. Do you know what I discovered this time around? You can't find a ticket that's less than $5,000. This Christmas, because everybody's heading to Nigeria because of the election. <laughs> and you might sound to you like a joke. It is not a joke. A lot of people have contacted us that they want to work with us between the end of December until the election. And they are all in the diaspora. They all, most diaspora people have their voters cards. That's right. Yes. People are not taking this thing for granted anymore. So don't take it for granted that because someone is in Maryland today, you won't be in Nigeria on February 16th. A lot of people have their vacation already set up around that period. And those are people that will come and shop and call the ABC and the PDP as well. Because they are Nigerians and they are entitled to vote because they are registered to vote. So, do we have two more questions to send? Yes, we have two more. Two more. Prince, you said you have a question. I'm doing good. I'm uh, not in this. The reason I'm saying this is only that I can protect you. I have my question, but before I lose my question, we did something on uh, the Lagos of Christmas. We do the black soda. When you confront them, that why are they beating these people? Yeah. Because you said they are going to ask me and they don't stop. Yeah. And they don't have God will bless you. If you not come back after that, you will move and you will see. Oh, you will pass over. Oh, this is a little bit funny. And he will go on. On my way, I will go back. I will go back. On the couch, I will go back. I will go back. You are dealing with my own. But we will go to say it. God will put that in the shape. He has an investment. I'm from Rio Grande. Someone told me this morning, he said, he said he cannot prostrate to any king. And I said, that's not true. And I said, I'm going there today. And I'm going to ask him. If you remember me, you shake it over here. And I said, I have a question for you. And I want you to please answer me that question. We cannot put our question on the side. Thank you. Thank you.
you're working with them, and how do you kind of gauge the votes of the people that the other candidates are taking? Thank you very much. Uh, can we take one more from the studio? Anybody, you know, for every person. 
And uh, in that instant, I just tell you, I went to see the owner of Big Bear. And he had me in his palace for three hours without paying any attention to me. No apologies. He walked in, sat on the throne, and I told him respectfully that you cannot treat the other people like this. Why would you treat me like this? I see all backs in Nigeria, they come with at the airports for rich people their crowns in the rain, sun. When it comes to poor people, you don't give them any respect. Respect begets respect. I don't say any more than that. As long as we spell ourselves, our culture is not. Uh, the division amongst you. There's actually a good division amongst you. I think what happened in this last in this election is that a lot of young people, and it's a good thing, came out to start speaking to a generational transfer of power. And there are a lot of them, and they have ideas. A lot of them have different competencies. Right? There's a book alone, there's a fellow through to a there are females built in the in the business of telling how bad it is for the old people to keep running the country. In fact, what we say in Nigeria is that we are about to be governed again by our ancestors. That's how bad it is. If you were born in 1971, like I was born, you knew about to obey in 1979. You, we studied at Go Way in Social Studies in 1979. In 2018, he's still the Minister of Agriculture of Nigeria. Buhari, President 1983. 2019, he's still going to be President again. If you are born in 1983, how old are you now? Huh? 35. So when they say that you are going to become president, <laughs> if the guy who was president the whole time, they have killed our aspirations. But at the same time, the fact that young people are aspiring to be president does not mean that all the young people are good enough to be president of the country. What we are about is we set the standards by ourselves. And all the young people went out and did our awareness. We even debated ourselves. But with due respect, there is a young man who has been around for a long time as well. I was around in 1992. When I was 22 years old, I was standing behind that building when they had all these elections and all the politicians ran away. I was around with due respect in 1998 when. And Abiola uh, died, he conducted his burial. The, the report is there. So, all these other young people, they have experience too, no doubt about it, we can't rubbish them. But at this time, we are looking for a young person who can take other young people to the promised land. That's right. That's what we are saying. Yeah. And we can also take the old people to the promised land. We can take men to the promised land. We can take women to the promised land. We can take children to the promised land. And it's a combination of a lot of factors. So sometimes we are very clear that there might be a lot of young aspirants or candidates, but we are different. That's the truth. We are different on the basis of integrity, on the basis of pedigree, history, commitment. Even sometimes we are different on the basis of our convictions. Because we see some of the young people who are running, who are even afraid to mention names, to talk about issues. Some of them sound poetic and diplomatic instead of talking about the good issues and confronting the matters at hand. Some of them have served in government before. They couldn't do anything confront the system. So I'm not here to condemn any young person, but tell all the other young people 
that is a young man with a difference. And that's what we are all doing. To present the other different things. I have something to vote for. And I think it's becoming very clear. Campaign material, thank you, my sister. You see, our campaign materials are so important and so interesting that before we put them out, they are people consume them as if their life depends on them. And you can understand why those materials carry a lot of weight. Some people's hope and aspirations depend on those materials. Their future is written all over it. There is a video we were watching before we came online, and I wish we had the projector here working. Of a young man who was carrying a poster on the street of Lagos in traffic, and the point he fell to his knees and started begging, Please vote for this man, he's the one who can save us. This is what the materials represent to our people. But we are here pleading with you to support us so that we can make these materials available. We cannot compete with the people who are stolen public funds. But they have huge quantities of their materials and nobody is touching them. That's why they are arresting our people for pasting our few posters. The people who are posting pasting posters in Lagos every day. In fact, the APC has a gang in Lagos whose job is to remove posters of anybody that is not APC. The police has never arrested them before. They are arresting our people who only have 70 posters and are keeping them in detention. So that's the way it is. Please, apart from directly supporting us, you can do what our sister there is doing. Support your state, your world, your local government right there with materials, posters, handbills, t-shirts, hats, whatever you can. The advantage we have is that nobody is asking us for rights. If you go to Facebook today, ABC has a place they call Akara Joint, where they are frying big cage to give to people. And we are telling anybody that is eating that big cage, you are eating, they are frying your future. And they are serving it to you. It's your destiny that they are frying. You take it, you are eating your future. And in reality, sometimes those big case service, they are ritualistic activities. Yes, we have nothing to do with that. But they actually do it for rituals. So anytime you eat the Akara, you are eating your destiny. <laughs> Promises and what we can do. Let me go directly to it and we can wrap up and go into fundraising. We are not just saying we provide five million jobs, we broke it down. That in providing 24,000 megawatts of electricity, solar energy alone will provide 4,500 megawatts, and that alone can provide over 1.5 million jobs just to put the pieces together. I just flew here from Arizona. If you are flying into Arizona, you see solar farms popping up everywhere. That is the kind of thing we are talking about providing jobs for young people in Nigeria. We are providing 200,000 jobs for teachers who will be trained for six months and found across the country per year. Those are real jobs, 160,000 jobs for health workers, the same way we are doing health, I mean nursing here. Those are real jobs. We are providing a thousand agricultural entrepreneurs by local government, 774 local government. Those are real jobs. But most importantly, we are paying minimum wages equivalent to living wage of 100,000 naira. Those are real payments. So these are the promises. And we have to find exactly how, where the money will come from and who will get paid. We have engaged and challenged 
the Facebook economics in Nigeria who said that if you pay workers minimum wage, it will cause inflation. We ask them, why is it that the senators who are taking home 14 million naira per month, why is it that their own wages are not causing inflation? If you are a professor in Nigeria, your monthly salary is 450,000 naira per month. If you work to get to the salary and allowance of the senator, you need to work for two years, just a one month, to get to 14 million naira. If, listen to this, for you to take home the salary of the senator per month in Nigeria, if you are earning the minimum wage now, you need to work for 37 years. Just to earn 14 million naira, which is what our senators are taking home per month. But there are people who will tell you that minimum wage of 100,000 is too much. We get people. Yes. And these are the things we are there to solve. Ladies and gentlemen, it is painful to us, and I'm saying this as a moment of the truth, that we have to make us who have to explain to you that we can make this work. It's as if there's a part of some Nigerians that's a lot with suffering. And that's what we lack for suffering and smiling. Otherwise, why do we need to convince people about all these fantastic programs? And when you know that the people who are proposing it are people who have a history in doing what they believe in, who have conviction, people who have pedigree, people who have integrity, that's who we are. And most importantly, people who are brilliant. I mean, you can ignore me, but you can't ignore a man from family who obtained a PhD before he attended your term. Without that, I mean, are you going to compare him with Buhari who doesn't have a wife certificate? You know, or an Atiku? We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't want to go there. Please. Let's just work together, unite, and just take Nigeria once and for all and lift it to that heart that has never attained before. And like Malcolm said, every one of us here tonight has a chance to become part of history, a history that has never happened before. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much once again for coming, and I'll say, you know, let it just be that we are the ones who made it up. Take it back.
I am the chairman of campaign materials uh, committee for US directorate. I'm Pastor Ingrid Kisegi. And my appeal to everyone here, even after today, we are still going to be reaching out to you. We need materials, we need flyers, posters, uh, campaign t shirts, anything you can do to help to accomplish or actualize a successful educational campaign. That's what we need. Also, we will be reaching out to you. We're supposed to be having a raffle ticket today. And just for two dollars, um, I have with me um, the coordinator, Ms. Tom Williams. She's the coordinator for the fundraising committee for the whole of the US. Take it back. Take it back. Please, we want everybody to be. I'm glad that everybody is here. My name is Olato Williams, and I am the uh, Michelle Festival Fundraiser for CUS. Um, we propose, as part of our campaign strategy, and also for mobilization sake, to uh, organize a raffle. And the raffle is just $2. And the reason why we are organizing this raffle is that um, we believe that there is a need to educate our people, back home especially, about the dividend of democracy. Most of them don't know what democracy means to them. They need to know, they need to be sensitized. So part of the funding that we are going to raise with this raffle is to sensitize our members, our Nigerian people back home, about how they have the power they have in democracy. With their BBC, they can get the right hospital they need. With their BBC, they can get the best road they desire. With their BBC, they can get the best economy they desire. So that's why we are going to do the raffle ticket. We are you know, proposing to do the raffle ticket. But the raffle ticket will be on our way. We're going to send every, I mean, when it's ready, to all the coordinators here in the US. And we pray that, and we wish and hope that all of us will be a participant. Nigeria needs us. This is our time. This is our moment. And I pray that we're going to take it back. Thank you so much. Thank you, back. Thank you very much. Um, last thing, please. From time to time, let's keep lifting our uh, president, Mr. Shogore, up in our prayers. And please, Write this Bible verse down. This is that I received. Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 27. God says, I will overturn, I will overturn, and overturn until it has come to the right person. Suppose it, I will give it to him. Lift up in prayer that God should give Nigeria to him and it shall be done in the name of Jesus. Let's move on. Thank you. Do I have everybody's attention? Can you please be on your seat, please? Please. If we have people in the lobby or whatever that place is not, can they please come in? This is the reason we are here. We want to raise some money. If I was a pastor, everybody would listen to me. Because I'm not dangerously wealthy. Nobody is paying me any mind. We are here to raise money. And I don't need to repeat the reasons why we have to give for this cause. Yoruba says, Toba Mobi Ibi. Toba Mobi. And if you look at what we say, we should not lie. Allow me that word to believe me. For non Yoruba speakers, when we hear, you know, you want to be. When you hear, let's carry, and you pretend that it's going to end up on your head. So we are trying to carry our load ourselves now. The gentleman over there with the tray will be going from table to table to take donations. I don't want to tax anybody, I don't want to embarrass anybody. And because some people might have left their wallets in the car or in the house, I have promissory notes. I take promises. 
from people that God had promised is a death, not people like Wario. And you're not shabby. You can be us. I'm not going to let that. Uh, we have that one to shop. But right now, this gentleman here will go from table to table. You can please have the bronze reloads with you. So that those. So those without their wallet right here can make promises. Please make sure you have a pen. And make sure you have phone numbers for follow up. Thank you. It's going from table to table now. Some people already started this, even when it was time for fundraising. If you look at the train, we have someone in there. So, I don't have to repeat. If I say start so easy now, you will think maybe I've changed my name to Funke, but I don't know it's still my name. I won't ask you. If I start our Mosque level, where will you take all the money for mosque? We don't look over here today. Where are we going to sing? Because if I even though say I come America and I'm Fuji, I'm going to sing for Nigeria. Here we are, Thank you. As we go there, this thing. Now, I hope, Mr. DJ, do you have that song? Nigeria, you need to go go and. Everybody, this way. Under my platform, I have about two or three people who donate uh, in the amount of $50. So I've had $450 to it on behalf of me and my family, making it back, running up to $500. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Action! 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 I want somebody to challenge you. Yes, sir. That's how we do it. On top of that, on top of that $500, I currently have a, actually two bands in Nigeria that are two months ago. Uh, one of them is just registered. I will donate one of the bands. Means if I have bad news, 
Mr. Ayoba Kenti Mary, Abisola Ayodeji, Ake one day, Ade Yusuf, Alfred Ayebe, Mr. Ola Leri of Onewa, Mr. Ojowu, Shem Ojowu, and she had We thank you, thank you very much. Ola Olu Kone, Bihi Adewale, Adoroshi Ibrahim. Thank you very much. That's how we say big, big, fat, fat numbers there. Thank you very much. And to everybody that came in, we paid to have dinner here. That in itself is huge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have promissory notes too. Mr. Sheo Adoki. And she, thank you very much. Uh, I need to go to London to change my glasses. I will be there for only three months. Alexander Obai, thank you very much. This is the big amount I'm seeing here. Thank you. Mr. Oluwatosi Ayebe, another promise with us. Yes. Thank you very, very much. Oh, wow. This is, that, that is big. Thank you. And Suraj Day. To meet you, to meet you. Thank you very much. They put dates there, and they put their phone number there, and their email address. So that tells you they actually have it in mind to give us. We have Coach Roti Me Omokwe. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. The train is moving. It's moving very, very, very fast. I see we are all tired, but we are still going to dance. We are only here with that dancing. Mr. DJ, give us some song, please. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. He deserves a heart life. The cameraman is donating 500 posters. Thank you. Oh, wow. You deserve some afternoon.